Peggy 18. When we wrapped Dishonored 1 and the DLC, we started thinking about Emily Caldwin as protagonist. It became kind of a bit of an obsession for us. Welcome, Lady Emily Caldwin. To see Emily and treat her the right way, like think really how would she grow up, what would she look like, how would she carry herself. So it's 15 years after the Rat Plague, after the first Dishonored, and Corvo's been training her for 15 years, telling her someday our enemies are going to come for you with knives and you have to be ready. Then otherworldly usurper takes the throne. For the first time, as an adult, driven out of her home, she has to flee. And so the contrast for her is huge. She was an empress one day, the next day she's on the run. And she's trying to unravel the Duke of Sirkonos and his allies in order to win back her own throne. And so part of it is just like, take back what's yours. But at the same time, she begins to see the corrupting influences of bad leadership. Her motivation becomes, I need to take back the empire so that I can do right by the people. When we decided that Emily got to have her own powers, they needed to be interesting enough to be as cool as Corvo. Her mobility power is called Far Reach, where it's, it's more elastic than Blink. It's not so much a short range teleport as it's almost like a supernatural grapple. It allows you to pull yourself through the world. You can slingshot past things. You can grab people and pull them toward you and assassinate them in midair. You can pull objects toward yourself. Far Reach can be upgraded in different ways. Domino, it's that power that allows you to link the fate of characters in the world and whatever happens to one, happens to the other. If you look at her powers, most of them are befitting of an empress. She can link people together so that they share the same fate. She can mesmerize a crowd of people. There you are. I feel I'm so empty right now. She's also a young woman who lived a pretty privileged life, punctuated by a brief time of darkness. All hail her imperial majesty, Emily Caldwin. She uses Shadow Walk and she becomes this inky monstrosity and then for a brief time, does some terrible things, and then goes back to being the person that she normally is. And then it gets a bit crazy because uh, Emily also has the power of doppelganger, where she can create a reflection of herself. It can be used to distract AI enemies, or it can be upgraded so that it's actually lethal and it can assassinate. So whether you play Emily or Corvo, you work your way through the same set of missions. But that said, Emily's commentary on the world is sometimes similar to Corvo's, but sometimes it's different based on her perspective. I wish I could just run away from all this. Sometimes you do. And one of the underlying themes of the game is that Emily as Empress is used to depending on a lot of other people to get what she needs. And in this situation, she's really only got herself to depend on. And then on top of that, because she is a former Empress, an Empress on the run, people react very differently when they see her than they do to Corvo. All that, and you have your father's eyes, your Imperial Majesty.